Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 518, that's 518 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga, how you doing, how you feeling, my family and my friends, great, good to know. If it's your first time checking the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. If you're listening to this video podcast app, please leave me a five-star review. I've seen a bunch on there already. Keep them coming. You know it's more than welcome. You know it's going to help with the algorithm. You know it's going to help my ego. You know it's going to help my confidence. You know it's going to help my self-worth. All that is more than welcome. And of course, support via Patreon is welcome too at patreon.com. For just A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O. I've already uploaded a Berlin drug story episode on the Patreon site. So if you're going to check out and listen to how I went about securing or someone like me would have went about yeah let's do that if you want to know how someone who might have been me would go about securing hypothetical class a substances in order to dance to douche 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 music then jump over to patreon.com for slash a g o s t i n h o that's patreon.com forward slash a g o s t i n h o the link is in the description wherever you listen to this you'll find the link to my patreon subscribe it's only one dollar per month to get access to all my bonus content and of course there's other tiers too so if you're going to jump up to the other tiers and support the boy then please do so i'll be doing some live streams at the end of the month so please jump on there and get involved patreon.com forward slash agostino get involved one dollar one pound per month get access to all my patreon bonus episodes you get a bonus episodes every week that drop every week i've already started this week i'm going to start again next week so jump on board don't delay every week bonus content available at patreon.com forward slash agostino i appreciate all the love and support but yeah here we are back again episode 518 of the agostino zynga show we have a jam-packed show today many many things to get through the docket so if you're not relaxed if you're not calm if you're not chilled out and all that good stuff then you're gonna find it a bit difficult to keep in tune so make sure you do so grab yourself a drink grab yourself whatever you need and let's get acquainted let's get settled and let's just jump right into it and won't waste any time straight raw no lube, no vast, no nothing. Do you know what I mean? Let's just go, let's just go, let's just go. So, first thing on the docket, and something that I've been wondering a lot of, and I kind of spoke about it briefly in another podcast, obviously because of my recent trip and how I kind of immersed myself back in the nightlife scene with a different kind of perspective and a different sort of approach to how I was when I was younger. This is a courtesy of Mixmag, and this is the following. The UK's strongest ever ecstasy pill found in Manchester Club, right? And if you know anything about pills, you know anything about going out, you would have known and have seen the difference in the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, especially with the, you know, complications with all the... Um, supply chain you know stuff that's been going on all over the world at the moment um there's been a real shortage of actual good pills out there and on the, on the scene and if you haven't really experienced it yourself then you would have read news reports of people all over the place unfortunately falling ill some of them you know fatally so dying off the back of maybe ingesting pills that were laced with fentanyl or just you know from i would just say um what's to say reckless abandon right when you've been stuck indoors for the past 18 months during lockdown then you're allowed to go back outdoors with no real education and again we don't have great education when it comes to drug safety when it comes to um what do you call it harm reduction and whatnot and just making sure people are safe when they're doing their drugs is more of a kind of punishment um approach that we have in the uk instead of education educating people and making them aware and making them conscious of how to take stuff properly it leads to people going crazy and being a little bit too excessive and then i'm sure there's a group there's a wide i'm sure there's a split no, I'm sure there's a group of people who definitely pass away because of drugs that have been cut poorly because of other issues having the supply chains that make people have to cut corners and I'm also definitely sure that people were definitely had to pass away because it just hadn't had a I won't say practice but they hadn't had whatever it needed to be in order to go out and kind of get back on it to that level do you know what I mean they need to kind of ease themselves into it but if you know anything about Brits you know anything about people from the UK we don't ease ourselves into nothing we go straight in hard as possible and unfortunately of course this has some fatal results but it looks like this has all been turned on its head because again like i said before the quality of pills out there at the moment is terrible i think the drug scene in general is a little bit shaky people are kind of worried about stuff because everything's kind of been cut with fentanyl and whatnot but from what i've heard out there on the streets the drugs the pills especially are not that great they're either really weak 
or they're really good but there's nothing in the middle beforehand you used to get a lot of mid pills pills that weren't that great but if you had a couple you could probably have a good night but nowadays you might have to buy seven and you might only get high off two because they've been cut with absolute crap or they're just not made that well or you get really high dosage ones that of course are going to cause you trouble and this is a good example of it the uk strongest of XC pill fan in the manchester club so absolutely mad right but it should be surprising though because manchester's on the coast right near near or well, it's nearer a coast than we are here in the uk so there's more avenue or kind of ways to get those kind of things smuggled into those kind of shores first and then by the time they trickle down here to london they've already been boshed and bashed and trampled on and you know and extracted of all their goodness so the following the strongest XCP ever found in the UK have emerged um, and undif unidentified Manchester Club Vice has reported. I wonder why this unidentified. I wonder if it's one of the bigger ones or a smaller one. Uh, the Blue Punisher pill, a common shape used across the country, weighed in at a whopping 477 mg, around triple the quadruple strength of a normal pill. Mandrake Drug Analysis Lab in Manchester Metropolitan University tested the pill after they found at a club in the city, concluded their dosage and the strongest ever they found in the country. The record breaking tabs were weighed at 650 in total. Fucking nuts. And this is why when you do go out and you do drugs, again, I'm not, I, I don't really do pills as much as I used to do in the past when i was mad young um now i kind of you know kind of keep off of those things in general if i need to maybe i would take like a quarter or something but this is why in general if you're gonna go out and take pills as you can see from this pill that someone's holding looks like a i don't know like a mitsubishi one or one of those ones right but whatever you see a little crack they have there those are usually those little break points that you should use in order to kind of have a safe a safe basically trip if it may be you know does that kind of term you say whatever safe high you kind of crack one and if i was and if it was me especially after the pandemic i would be extra cautious and i would go i would crack it in half and i'd crack it into a quarter and then i'd see how i feel after 20 minutes take one and then if you feel good after 20 minutes or you need to top up take the other bit and usually it kind of kicks in within like i don't know 20 i guess to 20 to for 20 let's say 20 to 50 minutes right in that kind of range but basically under an hour you basically start feeling the effects and you can kind of start rolling and go from there but you don't need to take too much but people these days just go too crazy and just start ingesting two or three pills at a time you know mad drunk especially in the uk we tend to get super sloppy when it comes to alcohol so the combination of those things isn't the best but this is the reason why people this is the reason why a lot of people advise people should always take smaller amounts in terms of dosage and then work up to the full because you never know if you're pill because the issue they, they, they have here is one is twofold when you have a pill from what i've understood online when they manufacture this stuff whatever the mdma kind of concoction that is in here there's no kind of there's no exact way to kind of make sure the spread of MDMA is even across the entirety of the pill, right? So imagine if this pill is a 200 mg, right? It could, for all intents and purposes, for whatever reason of how it's made and how it's kind of baked, whatever it may be, all the 200 mg could be on one side instead of the other side. So if you go and just take the whole thing, you could be taking, you know, one side, you know, you could be taking maybe double of what is actually in there, or you could be taking half of it, which is a dud. So what you're meant to do is just take a quarter of it and work your way up because you never know how much the actual thing is in terms of dosage. They obviously hypothesize when they, you know, weighing them and kind of making them in the labs, I guess, but there's no way to tell exactly how much is in it. And usually I've always found, um, dealers sometimes undersell what they actually are so you might get one that says 200 mg but it's actually 300 do you know what i mean so it's hard to kind of really be exact on it it continues fears are now mounting over the danger to club goers in north of england with warnings from fiona Meesom, the director of drug safety organization the loop stating it's likely to be amongst the highest in the world she said that these were the strength pills illustrate just how dangerous the lack of information about mdma and content of pills may can be a lack of information on strength can transform into a pill from benign to deadly the blue punisher pill was found in a batch of super strength pills ranging from 397 mg which is what i'm used to seeing a range i'm used to seeing stuff around the 250 the 180 to two 180 to 320 saw range um to 470 mg it says here the tabs were seized by security and identified manchester club so crazy right and it's also good to see the security actually passing them on to these drug safety organizations instead of just you know what they usually do is they just pass them on to the staff that work at this place or sell them to other punters it's just it's a slimy mimey world or the other thing i've seen people do which I've heard in other clubs, maybe some clubs I've been at recently, they do a, they do the stuff they do at, in, in Ibiza. Because I've seen videos of it, actually, because I've never been, right? I've never been to Ibiza, but I've seen videos of DC10. Not videos, yeah, I've seen videos 
I've seen videos and I've seen pictures because I went. I remember when I was browsing when DC Ten was reopening, just checking on Instagram and seeing what was going on. I remember seeing a post from some guy who was basically taking a picture of a security guard on the dance floor, and the caption was something like, "Oh, my man grips me up on the dance floor the, the, the last year. And now we look us with buddies." I was like, "Grips you up?" And then I had to kind of read through the comments of what his friends were saying, and essentially what goes down in Ibiza clubs I guess is because they know British lads like to get on it and they, and they don't believe in going to the toilets and doing bumps right for whatever reason I don't know what's wrong with English people we hate going to the toilets or going somewhere else to go and do our drugs we like to just do it on the dance floor flipping bizarre human beings we are but whatever we're not well trained we're not well uh, we're not cultured in that respect so I guess security guards in those places know that and because those places you know high ticket bar you know bars are expensive they're not exactly going to chuck you out because essentially they may be throwing money down the drain and they may be passing you onto another club that might make money off you because you're definitely out there to spend money you're not going to go back to your hotel room so what they'll do is that they'll grip you up threaten you your life and stuff you know threaten to take your passport i don't know just do whatever scare tactic that they can do you know call the police with the drugs blah blah blah, blah. and then what they'll do is that they'll say you got an option right either we call the police they do see your stuff or you give me 200 euros 100 euros and usually guys and girls that go to like dc 10 and stuff aren't going with like 50 euros right you're going with a bit of money you saved up from whatever job you're working at and you're just going to go there to go and you know have bare cocktails eat some great breakfast hang out with your friends on the beach and go and rave so you've definitely got the money. So they'll just swindle you for those kind of things. And, you know, in all intents and purposes, if you've got the gear already, 100 euros isn't that much. You know what I mean? Um, in order to kind of make sure that you keep your drugs and you also go get allowed to stay in the club. So that's what they usually do. And I know some clubs in the UK have started to do the same thing as well. I guess it's again because of the pandemic and because clubs' attendances aren't as great as they were beforehand. They don't exactly want to chuck you out either. So they would rather let... Because I remember even the other day, some dude... I bumped into said that you know he had a lot of stuff of his seized then he was still let in which is odd isn't it because imagine if you come in with bare shit because i think he had like more than five grams of random stuff that he had on him if you come in with that sort of stuff usually most clubs will be like yeah i don't want you in my club you're already a mess but they still let him in even though they seize these stuff so it's clear that they're kind of you know they're kind of bending the rules a bit taking advantage of the situation because they want to get people in to make sure that they can still spend money at the bar and whatnot so it continues here it says Misha also suggested the pill might have been made by mistake likely by a junior and she says I guess it's more likely to be a cock up than intentional maybe the boss went out for lunch and junior was left to charge with the pill press and got the consistency wrong the variation in the width it's suggesting consistency of amateur pressing okay cool the average MD made those as an adult is around 150 to 200 mg um, regions tests by the UK drug analyst Guy Jones said on the high strength pills it's a new world record is it possible to write a stronger one has ever been made but a number of pills on 400 mg in a public test result could counted in one hand bloody hell but the unfortunate thing about stuff like this is now dealers all around the country because this is news and it's been you know viral news over the last couple of hours for sure they're going to start marketing their pills as one of the strongest ever jeremy they're going to be calling it what is it um is it a blue punisher what is it it's a punisher pill but yeah blue punisher pill they're going to be calling it a blue punisher pill 477 mg so whoever's got a hold of those is going to still make money so that junior who kind of got you know maybe wrongly dosed the pill isn't going to get in trouble they're especially probably going to get a, a promotion dealers are going to get make a lot of money cup punters are going to be chasing their dealers for that particular dosage because it's a high it's just going to create an entirely horrible secondary market it happens quite often whenever somebody notable dies off the back of pills and stuff or some whatever recreational drug usually the price or usually the dealers market it as whatever this da -da 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 -da, the drugs that killed michael k williams or whatever i mean it's horrible but that's basically the life these guys live and they live on the edge mate they live on the absolute edge but yeah 477 mgmd made pill mate absolutely nuts in it and it's mad because from what i've heard or what i've read online again not an expert but i kind of dived into this super hard when i watched um what's that fucking um tv series on netflix at the moment uh it's a dutch one it's about a dude it's about a pill industry as well a guy that manufactures pills and I think they're now making a prequel to it. But anyway, there was a lot of that. And obviously Gomorra, you know, and obviously Narcos. It got me really interested in the drug trade and all that stuff. And, you know, and the war on drugs in general. I've got many, many books about the entire thing. So I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd say I'm kind of fairly knowledgeable about it. Surface level stuff. Just stuff I've kind of read on books, in books and whatnot. So don't really quiz me on too much shit. But from what I've read, one of the main reasons why the pills are crap nowadays again is because there's been a ban in China for the... Um, 
component PMK and allegedly that was one of the kind of main components that was used to make MDMA supposedly it's a legal thing that is usually used in stuff like perfumes and whatnot and for whatever reason I think either the quantities that you can buy have been reduced legally or it's just an outright ban in terms of how you can buy it. Uh, whatever there's something that's happened to it that's basically stifle how people can make it and whatever um research chemical the um that's the, the r yeah whatever rc version of it they've made isn't as good as the original isn't as good as what pmk is so because of that the quality of the overall mdma and the quality of the pills has gone down really really badly and again i've not done mdma pills in many 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 years but from what i've read a lot of people have said the quality of them isn't as good as they were previously before and a lot of it has to do with this supposed ban on pmk that's been in uh, enacted in china that's now affecting people obviously that are making pills in europe so they're obviously figuring out other ways to get around it and again supply chain issues are affecting people to get stuff in their hands and it's just funny the the unintended consequences of all this stuff and how it's affecting people you know young people all around the country are unfortunately passing away off the back of the bad pills people are getting in trouble it's just, it's just a mad thing mad mad situation but again 477 mg man imagine that that's gonna knock your absolute socks off uh moving on then we got this yeah this is roughly quickly to, to not touch this but not touch this but you do touch this obviously this has been all over the timeline for the past 24 hours the the you know marital um or, you know yeah, marital whatever you may call it the relationship drama that's been going on with the baby and danny lay and um yeah i don't really have much to say about it again it's women's business it's not really my place to speak on it at all but it is actually interesting to just see the amount of energy people are putting into kind of deciphering who's right who's wrong morally posturing about stuff inserting themselves in the situation making it about themselves all this sort of nonsense that's existing when you think about it especially especially considering what we've been through the last 18 months and so you'd think people's time would be more allotted to things that actually matter or you'd think the time would be more used for things that could actually be constructive to their long-term goals and success and i think to myself even from myself on the some of the topics i talk about and things i get really geeky about or the stuff that i cover on my show in general whether or not my time could be used you know could be used better right could could i could i use could i could i not use my time in a more useful way to kind of get myself to where i need to get to it's actually going to make some real change it's actually going to affect me in a better way and it's actually going to allow me to get closer to my goals and whatnot i want to do and i definitely do and i generally do think a lot more people could kind of um could kind of use um this opportunity to maybe reflect more on how they're kind of spending their time because i'm seeing a lot of people kind of pontificating arguing with strangers online in comments about people that they don't know they're never going to meet they aren't their family members um, people who they probably are doing worse than in life in general when it comes to relationships again not talking about monetary all that sort of stuff i don't really get it again i understand in some on one aspect of it because they're celebrities and it's now been internet business right social media business like once you put your business out there on social media people are allowed to comment on it and say so whatever they want to say so you know if they didn't want to cause a drama if they didn't want people inside their business don't go on live and start talking about stuff that you want to talk about but i don't know man i just think being overly invested in celebrities lives in this way and kind of you know um, using this opportunity to share your opinions and your standpoints and where you kind of view things and how you would approach relationship is just a bit null and void because wherever they are at in terms of their lives and in terms of their level of celebrity especially when it comes to nouveau riche kind of celebrities right guys and girls who have kind of come into money only through music right in the last what few years i can't imagine how difficult that is to be navigate in this world that we live in now right especially with social media like growing up it's like we've always said it right people have always kind of hypothesized or thought to themselves i wonder how people like prince and people like michael jackson would have basically maneuvered or acted or people like tupac right if they were around nowadays with social media like how would they or if when they were coming up social media existed like how would that have impacted their success how would that have impacted how they were perceived because a lot of it has to do with social media because you know you only have to look at some of the comments Danny Lay made throughout the entire process of this argument she's having with the baby there was a lot of mention about the internet and social media and what people think and all this sort of stuff and a lot of her life decisions and you know career choices and relationship choices have been pretty 
predicated or influenced in some conscious or subconscious way by what people have said on the internet which is absolutely nuts to think about but again it's not surprising because essentially if your entire career is um a ra if your entire career is centered around the approval or the kind of you know yeah the approval um of people and strangers online in order to kind of make a career you kind of have to be sentient and aware of what they're talking about right you kind of can't really unplug and pretend that you don't listen or watch the stuff you have to kind of be aware of it because essentially those guys and girls are the ones that are being able to put clothes on your back and keep a roof over your head and obviously food in your kid's stomach and shit but to a certain extent it also is incredibly destructive because when stuff goes wrong everyone now thinks that they have save the right but they have some sort of place to kind of tell you how you should go about living your life which is kind of insane and again like i said i just think people's time could be best used trying to do people's time and effort could be best placed trying to improve whatever situation they're in and those are you know those kind of nearest and dearest to them as opposed to kind of you know um armchair psychoanalyzing people that you're never gonna meet it just it just screams weirdness to me it just screams lameness i could never get behind that sort of stuff and again i think for the women it makes complete sense women gossip it is what they do but i think when it comes to dudes and shit it just feels odd to see guys talking about stuff, especially straight dudes you know you know we're full of shit you know we're, we're full of shit you know we have the capacity to be just as bad as the baby right or whatever it may be or who knows who's bad who's wrong we don't know because again not my business and there's too much layers into when it comes to relationship i don't get involved in that sort of stuff but in general we have the capacity to do exactly the same if not worse so to come out here and start pointing fingers and acting as the moral arbiter or as some sort of you know um virtue signaling about the stuff that you don't do and how you stand for in an effort to kind of you know get girls on your side it's just lame it's just absolutely lame and talking about lame there was this particular clip that kind of went viral on the social media webs of this guy called sideman all day who has some stuff to say about the danny lane the baby incident i'm going to play a bit of it now and then obviously comment on the other side about why i think it's pretty lame and pretty loser behavior for dudes to get to insert themselves into women's business obviously it's social media business and obviously this guy's a cultural commentator the same way that i am in my little niche so i understand he has to talk about some things but when it comes to relationships baby drama you know cheating stuff here and there i just think that's a line that i would never want to cross or get into because it just gets into bird talk and again guys can't really contribute well when it comes to this sort of stuff because in general i think the double standards do exist but when it comes to these sort of situations you're never gonna offer anything i think insightful enough that's ever gonna move the needle or change anyone's perspective especially on the other side when it comes to women they're never they're just not gonna listen it's just what a waste of time and for the guy's point of view we know that we are capable of the same levels of fuckery that we're seeing from these guys in the industry if we were put in the same position that they were put into i think most men who are honest and um, who can look themselves in the mirror and be kind of self-critical who can be um yeah who can be kind of somewhat self-aware um are, are under no illusions that if they were as famous as the baby and he has his access to him as he has to you know beautiful women all over the world and the money and all this whatever maybe we would be acting out the same way too maybe some of us weren't maybe some of us have been brought up in ways that would you know prevent us from ever being those type of guys but i think most dudes know that they have the ability to also delve into the scumbaggedness that we're seeing with some of these dudes so what do you do you just refrain from commenting because you know that could be you any day of the week so you just kind of leave it but you know some people don't want to leave it and they want to share their opinion Cyberman is obviously one of these people so let's see what he has to say about this situation himself let's see if this works yes people yesterday i was cooked roasted over coal fire on twitter because I said I have little pity for women who choose to copulate with popping rap popping rappers with lyrics that clearly advertise the type of single mother, publicly disgraced life they're about to head into. Men can be liars, manipulators and deceivers, abandoners, abusers and deserters. They can be crafty, but a lot of these newer rappers are giving away Man. the tea. I'm Man woke up in the morning, right? Probably hasn't washed his face, probably hasn't had a shower, maybe hasn't brushed his teeth grabbed on a bathrobe and put on a hat probably got his legs crossed under a table and he's here talking about women's business like this is why i think again what he might have to say because i've watched the video already and he has some you know some interesting stuff to say and for for sure he's right in some of his points but just the optics of it just look lame there's nothing that just there's nothing that screams 
I don't know what it doesn't scream. There's just nothing that you kind of take away from this and you think, yeah, that's a guy that you'd want to hang out with and grab a beer with. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing about this whatsoever. And I think from a woman's point of view, what exactly are you getting from this guy's speech that you're not kind of aware of anyway, but you're just kind of living in some sort of... Because we all do it, innit? When it comes to relationships and love, it's complicated, right? There's no real rhyme or reason why people get themselves in situations that are kind of um, obviously destructive and harmful to their physical mental well-being we know these things happen we all have families with deadbeat uncles and aunties and nieces and nephews who are families are all dysfunctional we know this situation exists we know family friends people grow up in school with it happens all the time so sometimes when people get on their soapbox when it comes to celebrities i think to myself like don't you have family members who have done the same thing or people that you know that you've grown up with who are even worse like i'm yeah i mean it's just like it is what it is isn't it and love is just love unfortunately in the same way as friendship it just kind of it kind of warps your kind of it kind of really affects your able your ability to kind of reason and deduce and to rationalize and to think critically right or to kind of step back kind of you know third person view and kind of really kind of view yourself from the outside and see where you're going wrong it does really mess up two things to you and unfortunately you don't think you know sensibly and you get yourself in a situation that you never really intended and that's it that's basically where it ends all this other pontificating about it's just noise really in the end of the day but i just think optics wise this is why i've never really been a fan of men gossiping because it just doesn't look cool you just look lame you know what i mean it's just like what are you offering what are you getting involved in it's like it's, it's the equivalent of like do you remember back in the day when you were a kid and you went to like your auntie's house as a birthday or party wherever maybe and all the uncles are in the in the room sitting down having beers chatting shit busting each other's balls all the women are in the kitchen gossiping having a little chat you know what i mean catching up on whatnot who's a dickhead who's not a dick you know that kind of stuff and then all the kids are upstairs that's equivalent of you like as a dude just wanting to sit in the kitchen with your mum do you know what I mean why would you want to sit there listen to that chat like it's already enough annoying with your mum screaming into the phone on loudspeaker about whatever issues going on with some family member back in Africa do you want to now sit in the kitchen and hear other women screaming about the exact same thing you don't want to do that and I think that's what it kind of comes back to you want to be either be in the in the living room with the, with the uncles who are going to kick you out sooner or later because they don't want you kind of cramping their style or you're going to be in a room with all the kids are chatting shit and you know and lying about what computer game you got do you know what I mean that's what you're going to do you're not going to be in a room in the kitchen with them women and that talking just i don't know it just comes across a little bit Ugh. just maybe it's just me maybe it's just me i'm not talking about a conscious rapper who is doing their thing uh they could be lying too but you know but these ones that tell you exactly how they see women as possessions as commodities the ones we have watched uh, year after year for more than a decade leave women high and dry are uh, are still selected with the expectation that things will turn out different and then the excuses are that these girls are young, yada, yada, yada. No, you know who's young? The actual kids they're having. I have pity for people until it comes to kids because I'm sick of this trend. of. This is a weird rationale too, again. He's going on as if like, it's a strange energy because it does sound a little bit like he's a bit pissed off that he's not the one. You know what I mean? But maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe he's reading too much into it about, you know, selecting. I don't know, whatever it may be. But it's strange to suggest that somehow scumbags only exist the scumbag dudes are only the rapper guys as if there's not like regular dudes that work in tesco's who are you know who have got four girls on a bounce and he's telling them all that he loves them that he's gonna go move to flipping south end on sea with them and shit those guys exist everywhere those guys were able to kind of you know charm the pants off of women and shit and usually it happens to the most unsuspecting one especially the ones that kind of take guys for granted oh no who kind of underestimate a guy's power because he's like from a certain socioeconomic level or from a certain background and then suddenly boom it hits you over the head happens all over the place it is what it is it's just a situation what the situation is but again women's business don't need to get involved in it it just comes across a little bit moist creating life for banks it's dangerous and it's harmful and it perpetuates a cycle of destruction. If you are not fit and in stable enough circumstances to raise a child, then do not have unprotected sex, man or woman, simple. I'm not mincing my words or applying cocoa butter to my words to tell you gently. There needs to be a shock to the system with this because it's madness. I have literally done so many videos talking about deadbeat dads. And the second I talk about a potential mother's choices, it's an issue. I'm never here for alleviating blame from men. That should be apparent by now. But I'm also here for safeguarding women from these men with good old, the good old fashioned weapon called common sense. If he treats his baby mother like rubbish, you're next. If he raps about treating women like trash, I don't care what he says to you behind closed doors. Stay away. 
If he's young, newly rich and wild, he's probably going to want to explore that to its fullest and you won't hold him back. That's not victim blaming. I'm not blaming her for his actions. I'm alerting her to the signs that his actions will occur. I'm never going to stop talking about abusers, uh, but I'm also aware abusers are never going to stop existing. So it's either we live in a fairy world where we only talk to the abuser or we live in the real world where we arm young girls with an awareness of the world that they live in. Not only for them, but for the child you could potentially see. He's even covering up his flipping robe like he's gonna, like he's, you know, he's exposing his flipping cleavage madness. But look, right? <clears throat> it's a nonsense, isn't it? Because I think, whenever I think, whenever I see guys who are incredibly opinionated when it comes to the relationship choices or the drama that's involved with celebrities, especially when it comes to the nouveau riche type of guys, like I mean, right? The guys who are kind of, you know, just kind of stepped into money in the last, what, decade or so. Their whole family line has been broke or on the poverty line before that and they've essentially elevated their entire you know family tree into middle class upper middle class you know you know one percent of lifestyles i it, i always kind of think of that um epic bill burr tiger woods bit where he essentially goes on a rant and essentially the joke the premise of the joke is that all these guys out there judging or pointing fingers at tiger woods have never been in his position right just imagine how crazy it must be to be a golfer because before Tiger Woods existed, there was no such thing as attractive superstar golfers. It didn't exist, right? They might have been, of course, don't get me wrong, they might have been attractive golfers that people loved this up. In terms of superstar golfers on a level of like a Michael Jordan, they didn't exist before. The guy was a phenom. Do you know what I mean? He comes through and for whatever reason, women love this guy, right? They, they, they're drawn to him. They think he looks incredible. And he obviously clearly loves the women back. And he's one of the only people in golf's history who's had, especially with, again, the media. And again, he wasn't, you know, imagine Tiger Woods' ascent wasn't at the peak of social media, right? Um, social media came a, a, a few years after he kind of was at his real, real peak. Yet he still got himself involved in mad drama when it comes to the females. And he had them actually falling all over him, right, to get access to the guy. So Bill Burr's bit is something along the lines of, of course, you would, like, you're, you're a golfer and you're having women, you know, usually you've got hordes of dudes jacking off, analysing your stroke. And now you've got, you know, this guy called Tiger Woods with his adoring fans, uh, you know, a bus full of, I think, you know, blonde women from Scandinavia getting dropped off to kind of watch him play golf. Of course you're going to go crazy. And I think most dudes, deep down, understand when they see a, a scandal or something of a dude whatever it may be in the media you know cheating on some super supremely attractive woman out there da, 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 da. they will understand deep down that that also could be them now most guys try and have principles and morals and whatnot i've spoken about it myself on my podcast about my difficulties and you know, wrestling that i'm trying to do in my whole life where i'm trying to make sure that i'm congruent where I'm trying to make sure that the person that I am in private is also the same person I'm in public or the person I'm in public is the same person I'm in private. I'm trying to have my personality and my being represented. I'm trying to just be like a stand-up dude, right? And it's very difficult to do so, right? Because you have to tell the truth. You have to be honest and stuff. Um, you have to just be... You just, there's a lot of stuff that you have to do that's pretty difficult nowadays because people are scumbags and the world kind of, kind of rewards that sort of behavior. But in general... We also know, I think as most dudes, if you're honest with each other, we know that we have the we have the capacity to be corrupted. And we also know that if we had access to the money, again, to the wealth, to the money, to the fame, to the success, to the whatever, just access in general to people selling into it. Imagine, just, just imagine for one sec, most dudes in life, I've guessed 90% of guys, when it comes to attracting somebody that they want to get intimate with, you know, someone you want to fuck, someone you want to date, whatever it may be, it's usually you pursuing them. It's usually you sliding into a DM, responding to an Instagram story, doing a heart eyes emoji, doing whatever you can to kind of get an attention, trying to get some sort of bite on your bait, right? Do something just to kind of get the attention and maybe going from there. It's never the other way around for the most, for most guys. You don't have, a, you've never experienced like guy, girls tripping over you, right? Crossing the street, wanting to ask you questions chatting you up adding you da -da -da -da, creeping in your comment it's not something you think you ever have experienced so imagine that happening at scale everywhere you're going you're having those interactions where somebody's trying to get into your trousers get into your pockets right whatever right? maybe get on your team it must be weird right and it must do something to it must do something to you. It must corrupt you in some way, sure, for sure. It, especially if you're a stand-up guy, it must do something to kind of corrupt your um, your moral 
your morals, your principles, you know, how you've been brought up and shit, it definitely does something to you. So I think most dudes understand that. And guess what? We just look at the news and we just keep it moving because we know that could easily be us. But when you're one of these kind of dudes who kind of, you know, I don't know, you want to play both sides of this fence. You want to be the one that calls out the guys. You also want to be the one that calls out the girls. And if in theory, what you're actually doing is that you're, make, you're, you're trying to be that guy that all the girls can kind of point to and say, see, he's a guy like you and he's talking about this sort of stuff and he's this way, da, 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 da. But really in the actuality, guys, guys don't really, I mean, they're not going to mess with you too tough because they know you're up to no good, right? They know really and truly there's like a cloak and dagger. You know what I mean? No, no offense, he's wearing a robe and shit. Cloak and dagger. There's something that you're hiding, you're concealing. Do you know what I mean? You're not really being up afraid not being honest because most dudes wouldn't want to talk about it because they know it could be them next easily easily in any way shape or field and they also know that this is something that's a complicated issue that's not really going to be advanced in any way shape or form by what i or what he has to say in any way shape or form. we're not going to affect anything we're not going to change women's minds we're not going to change the conversation we're not going to change anything about that issue in general we're not going to change it because let's let's analyze one tiny thing before i end and kind of continue on to other stuff there's an instant there's a couple of instances in the video where obviously the baby's antagonizing Danny Lay a bit, right? He's saying some stuff to obviously trigger her because again they've got a relationship, so I'm sure he has what he, you know, we all have done it in the past where you have a relationship that's kind of deteriorating, and you may be at the point where you both don't want to walk away really, and you're just kind of poking at each other. I don't know. It's just you know you say stuff to each other, but you know how to get under each other's skin, and he's clearly saying stuff to antagonize her, right? But she's also responding in a very Phys passive aggressive almost physically aggressive manner where she's kind of walking over to him lingering and at one point she kind of oh she kind of does that right motion as if like oh if the camera was on right now i'll be beating you up over the head so clearly that's what relationship they kind of have now no one's saying what's right or wrong but let's just imagine that the roles were reversed and it was the baby that was doing that to her especially with his history of violence that he has how what the incident would be how did they respond if he would refuse to leave and he was also on the video clearly looking like he was trying to physically hit her and he was restraining himself people would be going absolutely apeshit and again there's nothing you can say that's ever going to change a woman's mind in that perspective because still the baby's a villain danny lays the princess that needs to be saved it, it just is what it is unfortunately when it comes to relationships and love we're just not yes we're not at a point yet in society where we're mature enough to actually have adult conversations about the roles men and women play in relationships men and men and men women and women we're not at that point yet we don't because we're just infantile and in understanding about how relationships actually work day to day and we're in denial and all that and all that stuff that you know whatever else we need to talk about so when i see guys posted up in their bathroom talking about this sort of stuff ad you know ad nauseum it just fills me with absolute dread because i know for sure there's stuff in his cupboard that he's obviously concealing or there's things that you know maybe he's maybe identified in himself that he's kind of wrestling with that he sees in other people and again you comment it in a way like this and you try and spin it in a way to make you seem virtuous when in actuality it kind of makes you look more sus but in general i've just never been a fan of dudes gossiping i just haven't never been especially when it comes to women's business it just seems a bit gross there's nothing you're going to add to this in the, there's nothing you're going to add to the story it just seems a bit like loser behavior and again i just wish people would use their time more wisely or would just kind of you know maybe try and help their friends and family who are going through maybe similar situations because maybe they need your assistance more than people from across the pond but again maybe it's just me uh, da, 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 da. we move on from that one because that's boring news oh let's talk about this this is a good one isn't it so this is courtesy of page six right absolutely crazy 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 news so it's a courtesy of page, page six so to get a development about everything that's going on with the whole travis scott astro world situation one of the big issues when you're a global mega star right on that kind of level of a travis scott because you have to imagine right his albums what are selling two hundred thousand units per week you know uh, on average um he always sells out you know he's gigs and stuff that he's going on um it's just amazing right just just levels are just incredible one of the biggest issues with it is that when you get in trouble the bags it affects are just otherworldly it's not just your music it just affects so many other bags opportunities and it has so many kind of um, rippling effects in terms of who it damages brand wise that the damage is come what is somewhat untold right it's somewhat uncalculable how much it's going to cost you 
one kind of slip up one faux pas which is why a lot of these guys hire people to cover stuff up you know to change the narrative on stuff to spin stuff ignore stuff whatever it may be just so they can avoid these things because once trouble hits it's very difficult to kind of put that shit back in a bottle and this is a good example of it courtesy of page six it says w magazine trying to pull travis scott kylie jenner cover after astroworld so i guess they had a cover story plan for them to maybe to tie in with the release of utopia maybe kylie jenner had some sort of fragrance or lip kit or something that was going to come out that was going to tie into the thing they've got a new baby on the way like just something they were all planning publicists that had in view that's now trying to be pulled entirely but if you know anything about magazines they usually made months and months sometimes years in advance been put into printing and for them to get have all those been pre-printed and for them to be destroyed is going to cost upwards into the millions it's just incredible especially a magazine like w it continues here it says W Magazine is desperately trying to pull this up and coming edition after putting Travis Scott and Kai Jin on the cover. Patrick has learned editors are in a tizzy over the issue following the Astro Awards Festival strategy in which 10 people died and more than 30, 300 people were injured during the performance by Scott in Houston. The Scott Jenner cover, which also featured a big interview in the issue, was shot and printed before November 5th concert but had not been shipped, prompting a scramble to record the magazine, which obviously isn't going to happen because, more likely than not, someone's going to get a hold of it, they're going to get hold of the cover and the interview. If you publish it all online and we're still going to see it anyway and then people are going to use that as an opportunity to beat them over the head even more especially if they're showing off their austin their kind of crazy levels of wealth and whatnot people are going to use that as something to beat them over the head with so again the ripples effects of one person's you know fuck up a mistake are really 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 ever 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 or far reaching let's say wwe declared um yeah, the W editors have cleared any planned coverage of Travis Scott and Kylie from their website, but the magazine was already printed and now they're trying to stop the delivery trucks once source told page six. In the light of what happened in Astro World, the interview and the cover line um, seem inappropriate to say the least. Scott 30, da, 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 da. But yeah, crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy, man. A W magazine is getting pulled off the back of all that shit. And then I also think there's an issue with what was it? Was it Nike in it? I'm pretty sure I've got a Nike article here too. Nike as well, surprisingly, have decided to pull or postpone the release of the Nike Air Max Cactus ones, which again, not I don't think they were gonna be that successful anyway, because I think from what I saw online, a lot of people had some bad words to say about them. But considering that Travis has a very tight connection or relationship with nike they've obviously believed in him they've obviously kind of signed him up to do multiple pairs of shoes over the years he has a lot more in the tuck as well i think there was an air trainer one that was noted i think i saw a really strange was it an air force one or was it a jordan maybe it was air trainer one it was sort of like um it had no lining had no paneling was completely kind of covered and it looked really interesting shape wise and that was due to come out of course then obviously the capsule collections that tie in with it you know loads of stuff that goes in that he does with nike and again he's a big earner with them and obviously with air max day coming up like loads of shit that would have tied in with it that could have come out but of course this is now being poured this is courtship hype it says sneakers postpones the air max one and cactus jack launch it says nike and sneakers app have postponed the release this is read the, the flipping um, quote it says out of respect to everyone impacted by a tragic events at astro world festival we are postponing the launch of the air max one and cactus jack nikes and this is a big issue because let's not be under any illusions nike are always in there for the money they don't care about the fans they don't care about the consumers they've already proved it when it comes to all the slipping sneakers app in general we we were screaming from the top of our lungs that sneakers app was a flicking scam right um it was a flawed system a way of people to get hold of shoes the whole premise that you have to kind of you know wake up at a certain time to get into a raffle to win a pair of shoes to get by a ch to win a chance to actually purchase a pair of shoes that you don't have a chance to buy because they've all been bought or they've all been backdoored was absolutely crazy they told us we were insane they told us it was fair then obviously it got uncovered that it wasn't that people were gaming it there was that issue with that kid who had his parent working at nike and he was kind of fucking fleecing a hundred million pairs of boxes of shoes and reselling them and shit using his mum's company card like heinous stuff stuff that was going on back in the day but because we didn't have social media and we didn't have these investigative instagram accounts that exist or twitter accounts like this guy called sokji who i follow on social on twitter he's fucking an amazing follow all these type of people that didn't exist before or they weren't maybe prominent people got away with this stuff and we always knew then there was that other story I remember about that female track runner who uh, who I think was pregnant or went to go on maternity leave and Nike wouldn't sponsor her and shit. Like really fugazi, horrible shit that they do behind the scenes, right? So don't get me wrong. Um, uh, you know, Nike are no bastions of morality here. 
But this is obviously a big deal because if they, after all those missteps, after all those kind of not giving a fuck about anything and fuck them kids kind of mantra they have, for them to go to this direction obviously shows that the impact that they, that this tragedy Astro World has had is going to be far reaching to the point where Nike don't even think it's going to be worth it in terms of branding to align themselves with Travis at this very moment. Like that's how bad the situation is. And again, like I said, Nike aren't beneath or they're not above you know, still putting the shoes out and just making it work that way without having him promote it or not, not. Because let's be honest, sneakerheads too are, you know, they're scrupulous. They don't give a shit, right? Especially resellers. They're still going to buy them. Customers are still going to want to pay for them. Double, triple the price. Kids will queue. Some of the fan base, I'm sure, some of the Travis Scott fan base, will use this an opportunity to actually prove their fandom. I'm sure some of them will do that. Because I know if I was a kid and I was really a stan for a certain artist, maybe I would do the same thing. So again, I'm not trying to put any blame on them at all, but let's not be under any illusions. If these shoes came out tomorrow, they'd set out in absolute minutes. Now, I would say, personally, because they're not the most aesthetically pleasing shoes out of the line, they're not the most hotly anticipated either out of the whole collection, that maybe it was easier to postpone these than it would have been the previous ones that came out, like the Jordans and shit. You know what I mean? There's no one stopping a Jordan bag. You know what I mean? Michael Jordan's going to get on a blow and say, fuck them kids. You know what I mean? Let's just put these things out. It's what it is. The game's a game. But the fact that they're these shoes, they're not the most well received. You know what I mean? I think it was a bit easier to kind of um, decide to kind of pull the plug. But still, this is a big indication, if ever you needed it, that things are getting real peak out there from Mr. Travis Scott, mate. Real, real, real peak. And I could not imagine the toll this is going to take on the family on their finances in general again the loss of life is you know crazy and we don't even need to speak about how insane that is for the families that have been broken and shit but i'm just talking from purely from a travis scott point of view how that one misstep that one mistake that one lack of that one moment where he had a lack of care and then due maybe a lack of what's it called a lack of care or what, what's that phrase they use um not due diligence but whatever that phrase they use right where you may be trying to keep look out for your fans in that moment look what's look what it's gonna cost going forward and again how do you recover from stuff like this that's the interesting question i want to know because more likely than not let's be honest he's not going to face any jail time off the back of this it's definitely going to be a suffering of like brand and reputation and whatnot and it's gonna have to go on a massive rehabilitation tour tour after this and the fans will be sorry the the the, the families of the kids that unfortunately passed away and and whatnot will receive you know many many millions in payouts and stuff in order to kind of somehow make up for their devastating loss for their family but in terms of him his career will obviously continue he's not going to just stop making music it's not going to happen i don't think this is an octavian situation but it's still highly 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 undesirable and again goes to show if you don't look after your fan if you actually don't care because i'm saying i've always said people that always shout about how they love their fans don't love their fans because they talk about it too much when you love your fans you actually look after them for real for real you don't ever get yourself in these situations but then when you do get yourself in the situations, the only logical way for you to learn from this will be to feel it in your pocket because you're not going to learn any other way. You won't give a shit. The guy, what, who was the guy that fell off the fucking balcony and broke his leg and now he's in a wheelchair? I don't think he's, from what I know, if I'm digged into a story, he's not exactly, um, he's not exactly paralyzed, but he can't walk normally and he's let on his, on, on, you know, without crutches or without a chair. So he just uses a wheelchair for the most part. Um, you would have thought after that sort of incident, you maybe have to take a little bit of a step back and kind of re reevaluate how you kind of encourage your fans at the shows, but you didn't. And that's why I say you have to give people like Trap, you have to give people like Playboy Carty, people like no, I'm a play people like Trap, let's say people like Tyler, Tyler the Creator more credit, and even people like ASAP Rocky. Tyler the Creator went from being the guy that had similar sort of shows, people going crazy, and then they slowly dialed it back in again. People like you know, ASAP Rocky used to jump into crowds and fight people and they dialed it back in again and they've kind of over a period of time, you know, taught their fans how to properly behave when it comes to attending their shows. And I just don't think Travis ever kind of evolved or matured for that point. Because there was a moment in time where everyone wanted to mosh pit, everyone wanted people to rage at their festivals at their shows. Then people started to realise, you know what, it's a bit lame, it's a bit corny and also not everyone's tunes, you know, justify a mosh pit some people just make good tunes and it's good enough to kind of bop and enjoy the music too and maybe people just grew up and kind of decided it was a lengthy to do in general but regardless there was a bit of a shift in evolution 
and it just doesn't feel he ever had that and maybe this is kind of the consequences of that who knows who bloody knows but again if that wasn't enough last one on the travis scott thing this is courtesy of tmz travis scott 750 million astral world lawsuit drake apple live nation sue too and more likely than not you know again no one's gonna face any prison time off the back of this which is again is the most upsetting part of it if you're a family a family member who's lost somebody in your family off the back of this situation you're definitely going to be devastated that no one's really going to face any real consequences of this apart from monetary fines which you know again money's going to hurt but you can easily get that back but people's lives can never get, get taken back in that regard but one thing that it does do I guess is that it does affect maybe bags and opportunities for the long run because I think that's what court cases do. I'd imagine if you're somebody of a Travis Scott and Drake level, you don't want this smudge on your name or this lawsuit to be pending because it's going to affect your ability to move to do certain deals. Um, certain renegotiations are going to be put on ice because people don't know where you're going to be in 18 months or not. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's going to have far-reaching consequences that are probably going to go into the many many years as they litigate between who is to blame because no one's gonna especially when it comes to people like you know organ companies like live nation and apple and shit they're not gonna want to accept any kind of culpability at all in the situation live nation are probably in one of the two well both of them are in a tricky situation because if if what we believe is true from what we've been reading there was an awareness or an understanding on the ground level that things were already starting to get was already starting to go a bad way before he already got on stage and, and then 10 minutes into the show things are already bad anyway because i think the first person passed away maybe 10 minutes into the show already so at that point there should have been a moment where they could have cut, cut the show but obviously these platforms these live streaming platforms they paid a lot of money they put the thing together they were under no circumstances going to cut the stream it was never going to happen it was kind of similar to like a dana white thing do you know what i mean if somebody that don't get me wrong if somebody was to pass away in the octagon i just i don't think dana white would ever call off a card you're just going to get that person out of the octagon and kind of continue it keep it rolling the show must go on type of thing so that's where i think these guys are going to be pointing their fingers at each other throwing each other under the bus leaking documents and shit because they don't want to be culpable at all you know solely culpable anyway they don't want to be solely culpable but yeah the pictures of the kids that passed away man oh yeah yeah it hurts your soul every time you see it man jesus christ imagine going to a travis scott concert and passing away like that must be that that is a form of hell in it that is a form of eternal damnation passing away a fucking travis scott concert like horrible and it continues says here travis scott drake apple live nation and others will now need to answer to massive 750 million lawsuit brought against them by more than 125 fans including the family of one who died at the festival the suit filed by houston attorney tony busby is the first of others to come place and blame on travis and concert organizers for negligence in failing to properly plan the concert train security personnel and host the event safety yeah or, or host a safe event some of the accounts from the security guards that have got hired is just crazy. People were saying they were going to get hired, paid in cash up after the uh, after the event. They weren't given proper training. They were just told to kind of go and you know sort it out. Um, just incredibly horrible. People were saying that. I think I saw a video of some girl saying that most security guards were just chilling in the crowd. Some of them took off their high vis vests or smoking and shit, hanging out. You know, whatever. Doing 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 what security at festivals usually do. But when it comes to when it's a fatal situation like this, these things can make it look even worse. I think off the back of this too, wasn't there an issue? It doesn't he also have a collection coming out with Dior, right? Doesn't Travis have like a Dior collection? I'm pretty sure he did like a collaboration with Kim Jones. Bloody hell, man. All this stuff's going to be affected. Um, among them, I wonder if they're going to sue as well. If that's like a breach of contract, if it can. I wonder if they do those collaborations. That's the thing they're going to do. So I wonder, maybe there's multiple lawsuits coming out. Among the plaintiffs, the family of Alex Acosta, which is this kid, RIP, man. Alex Acosta, 21 years old, absolute baby, um, who's allegedly crushed by the inc incited, unruly, and out crowd control crowd. Um, as for a staggering 750 million, the lawsuit claims it was covered both physical, mental, and health injuries, as well as loss of life. Busby says no amount of money will ever come um, to plaintiffs and hold. No amount of money can ever restore human life, but the damage is sought in the case. Cases in the attempt to fix and make up the plaintiffs nothing more and nothing less. Travis and Live Nation offered refunds almost immediately. The consequences of the lawsuit addresses that often calling it a transparent and grotesque effort to defendants to limit their liability after the fact. Supposedly, I heard that if you accept the refunds, that kind of limits or kind of nulls your ability to kind of sue, 
which is a real slimy, scummy thing to do. On top of that better help thing that he was offering, you know, people that attended the concert like a free month or three years of better help. Again, I don't think that was as scummy and as gross as that was. I think that was mostly done when they didn't know how grave the situation was. I think a lot of them or whoever it may be in his team was still under the assumption that maybe or they were hoping that it was kind of pills thing like a fentanyl issue where people pass away so then you weren't culpable but when obviously it came out that obviously most of the kids from what we've seen so far again the autopsy has been done but from what we can see most of the kids have passed away due to the negligence and the poor organization and being kind of you know essentially squashed and suffocated in those crowds is what led them to pass away you know offering people a month free on better help and using the code travis or whatnot it's just you know it just doesn't sit right it says he has we reported 10 people have now lost their lives um with the most recent being a nine-year-old boy hey, hey. law enforcement continues to investigate what caused the deaths but those in the audience say a crowd crushed trampled and suffocated fans sources close to travis have maintained he did not realize the severity of what's happening in the crowd while he performed photos of the cops taking photos and watching the travis show more than 25 minutes after the hfd the crowd the concert a mass casualty event seemed back casually scott's claim 750 m's lawsuit which is probably going to rise as maybe unfortunately most more people maybe end up passing away or succumbing to their injuries and shit like oh yeah yeah what an entirely horrible situation the only the only good thing i can think of that i can come of this is that the likelihood of this happening again in the near future is pretty pretty slim people are going to be a high alert when it comes to safety of the fans at contests and whatnot and all these kind of viral videos of people trampling over barricades and storming places and shit it's going to be something that people are going to be encouraging anymore because that was the thing people encourage right that kind of crazy fandom um especially when it's not done in an organized and sensible manner with, with the right precautions is definitely going to lead to these kind of catastrophes man but oh sad all around in it fucking sad all around next one let's move on quickly talk about this well, let's, no, let's talk about this let's talk about this let's move this let's talk, let's talk here let's go straight to this actually let's talk straight to fashion so as i mentioned before in the podcast um there was a story that leaked earlier on i think a couple a few weeks a few days ago about the Vitega Veneta um co creative director name is Daniel Lee who was basically responsible um or largely responsible for basically bringing Bottega Veneta back into the public consciousness kind of reawakening a sleeping giant and kind of bringing him back into the yeah bringing him back to the sleeping giant and making him kind of competitive again when it comes to um the main fashion brands out of the people purchase and buy obviously created some seminal interesting pieces you know the you know installed some new interesting house codes and in general just created like great fashion items and clothes and whatnot and over the period of time people obviously lauded him great guy da, 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 da. but then out of nowhere he kind of leaves right um un unceremonially no real kind of announcement or no real kind of explanation as to why especially when you think of the monetary value he's added to the Bottega Veneta brand you know sales interest social media all that sort because especially without an, an official social media page they did that whole weird kind of online magazine thing that wasn't an online magazine blah 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 but in terms of kind of inf you know utilizing influencers um utilizing social media in a very unconventional way retail product placement all that good stuff they absolutely smash it so to see the guy at the helm of that leave was a bit strange and a bit weird and definitely spoke to something a bit fishy but anyway development have on, on that has been but Tech Veneta have decided to um, promote from within and have hired a guy called Mathieu Blasi, who is a new creative director now of Bottega Veneta. He's already been working there, I think, for a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, from what I've seen online, he's largely responsible for the following ish items, it looks like stuff like this from the pre for, which I would argue for with some people, which some people would probably not argue with me because I think I'm right most of the pre and resort type collections i think are far better than the main balenciaga sorry but the main bottega veneta runway or the main line collections wherever they may be right in terms of spring summer fall winter i think with the exception of maybe the first two runway collections i think it started to go downhill pretty quickly for bottega veneta especially the the pre the the most recent one which is kind of you know daniel lee sort of swan song for bottega which obviously leads me to believe from just looking at it evidence wise that show in detroit was pretty shit um i thought in general the whole idea about it going to detroit having what is it, is it carl craig do the soundtrack and shit was really um 
had the, something resonated with it obviously idea wise but the money spent on it the execution wasn't that great and i think obviously because that's the interesting thing i think as well about fashion that collection wasn't good i don't know if people said it though but because daniel is a fashion guy and he's kind of well well accepted within the fashion glitterati and within the sort of snobby fashion world sort of stuff he's more excused for that kind of you know runway collection but then if matthew williams does that sort of stuff everyone's always kind of piling on because he's not a conventional quote-unquote designer that went to fashion school i think those kind of double standards people have in fashion is very i don't know it's kind of gross especially when you think about the when you think about it in terms of the daniel lee situation it's pretty evident especially since they um hired somebody internally from what i can see again not being somebody who has any information or anything going on inside of fashion but it's pretty bait that more likely than not, this Daniel Lee guy is a bit of a cunt behind the scenes, right? Bit of a terrible boss. People probably didn't like him. He probably ruled the studio with an iron fist. He probably was the kind of guy that took credit for stuff he never designed. He probably overstated or overplayed how important he was to the actual success of the brand, right? Like me, me, me. That kind of cringe picture he did with his top off on the magazine. Remember that awkward picture with his little chicken arms on the front of a picture of his freckled body, like just awful, right? It didn't really scream sex appeal or sexy or self awareness in any way, shape, or form. It did scream a bit of nasty and the delusion of the grandeur which obviously you do need delusions of grandeur if you're going to be a flipping rock star creative director of a flipping luxury house but in general let's be let's call a spade a spade if this guy left the way he did and they're employing somebody from within it's definitely goes to show that he was a bit of a cunt if that's the case i've only heard good things about matthew williams i've only met him once in my life but i've only heard good things about him industry wise why does he get a blight if he's actual good guy i don't get it in fashion man the cut more country you are the more people seem to kind of give you a bligh with your runway collection but when you're an actual decent person and you're actually kind of trying to just make cool things and approach stuff in a cool and interesting way like matthew williams is and with the leaks and stuff that obviously he's doing um now with um Givenchy people are quick to pile on but then when it comes to Daniel Lini's last show at Detroit and no one even says anything but again we move on anyway this new guy Matthew Bl Matthew Matthew I think so you say Matthew Matthew Blasi I think is largely responsible for these sort of looks and according to his Instagram he's also responsible for these sort of looks too from the mainline collection which I thought was really cool if I'm not mistaken Skepta was something similar to this to a show or something um this this really amazing uh I guess what would you call that? Would you call it his interpretation of tart? What do you not 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 tartan? What's that? What's that print? I'm thinking of, but you know what I mean. It's a, it's a knit or a print. I, I'm not assuming. I'm assuming it's a knit. Whatever knit that interpretation that he's made there, it looks incredible. It comes in a complete suit, in the pants, the sandals, and the bag. And again, we got a last example here from the last slide, also showing some stuff. No, that's actually talking about the people arguing about whether or not it should be uh, a POC that's taken over, which is absolutely laughable. We'll talk about that in another minute. But anyway, go back to the main article. Um, Kershaw Vogue says, Kering have announced that Matthew Blasey, um, Matthew Blasey or Matthew Blasey, um, is assuming the creative director role at the Bottega Veneta following Daniel Lee's abrupt departure last week. You know, these little kind of, again, these little side pop up videos on these websites are really annoying, but they're also clever because what they do from working for various fashion magazines and startups and digital brands is that they use the metrics of you clicking articles and having these things auto play. They use those metrics of like, that every time it also plays they count that as a view or as an interaction when i click it and shit so that when they then you don't then put that in their deck when they're gonna go market for brands and have them to kind of sponsor the website or advertise or whatnot so it's very clever in that regard but it's very scummy and it's obviously not a great user experience because you have these we have these fucking videos playing in the background with these asinine kind of clips and shit but anyway continue the news that lee was stepping down stunned the industry he did more than revive the italian luxury house he set the style agenda and as anyone who's browsed the racks at the fast fashion chain can tell blasi's um, appointment isn't quite as surprising he was lee's number two at took a Veneta from mid-2020. Um, Kering has had enormous success moving behind the scenes, designers and spotlights. He had a Sandro Michele at Pagucci. Also, Bloody is not the unknown that Lee was. The, the 32, 7-year-old Belgium designer was widely respected and liked since he first attracted notice at Margiela. Um, though he maintained a nominality at the, at the influential fashion house, was known for Bloody's work was distinguished, both attuned at the Margiela codes of his time. Kanye West famously copied to the crystal in created Mars from the artisanal automotive collection show for his easy tour and supposedly I think he designs that as well so he obviously worked in collaboration with that blah blah blah, blah. but he's some pieces that he did with Mars on Margiela artisanal and he continues 
from Margella Blasi went on to work for the ex, um, exact the exacting Phoebe Fowler at Celine, who is said to have been headhunted him himself. He and Lee overlapped there, and after that, he joined Calvin Klein, two or three, da, 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 of course, where partner Pietri Mueller was a creative director under Chief Executive um, Ralph Simmons. Blasi and Mueller met at the San Simmons Art Turbo headquarters, elevating a company inside. Oh, shit, two, two very, very big fashion designers are a couple. That's a real power couple then in fashion, isn't it? I didn't know that. Shit. Um, elevating a company insider suggests um, elevating a co elevating a company insider suggests that we're in for a subtle shift at Bottega Veneta rather than the wholesale reinvention of what's come across the norm. Um, the puddle boots have become unlikely status symbol under the lease tenure seems sure to remain. Same with the other side's intractical motives and gave an edge to the brand's long held artisanal codes. Indeed, um, in a statement, Francois Henri Pinot um, said, or Pinot, Pinot, or Pinot, Pinot, right? Chairman of CEO of Caring said, I'm confident that Matthew Blasi's um, wealth of experience and broad cultural background will allow him to bring this creative input impetus to the lack to task sorry to lack of task to the task of carrying on the legacy of taking my Blasi first collection for the label will be February 2022 so more likely than not Michael B. Jordan there in the cut checking out Calvin Klein look more likely than not from what I remember or from what I saw from what they did with um um, Hedy Slimane at Saint Laurent Paris from all the kind of stuff that he created like the wire boots and the jeans and some of the jackets and shit some of the key pieces that have now become like the wardrobe staples of Bottega Veneta will stay I'm sure like the lug boots or the tractor boot whatever they call it the lug boot tractor boot, whatever they call it the puddle boots of course still um, some of the clutch bags the heels some of the maybe the cuts of the coat maybe that kind of members maybe that kind of work jacket kind of coat that Kanye wore also that's kind of popular everyone likes that maybe stay the bomber jacket some of the pants right there's gonna be some pieces that will stay and then what we'll see now we'll see who's really got the genius level ability to make fashion or to make you know clothes if the collection hits the same as those first two that Daniel Lee did when he was kind of first out of the gate, right? If they are the same level or the same sort of standard as that sort of stuff, then we'll know that some of the reasons why that stuff was so magical is because of the team and less so about the one dude, which is always a, which is always a disappointment when it comes to fashion. There's not a lot of people, especially that's why I think the streetwear guys coming into fashion is really good and really important because there's always a sense of collaboration and always a sense of kind of pulling back the curtain and showing how exactly the sausage is made when it comes to streetwear from time of like old videos of like Nigo and Hiroshi screen printing t-shirts and shit there was never any mystery behind how streetwear clothes were made it's always just the same ideas you and I have but then these guys are willing to put their money where their mouth is you know stump up, stump up some money buy some blanks get some stuff printed and go and sling some stuff in the shop and whatnot do you know what I mean that's what they're actually willing to do but when it comes to fashion this whole kind of mysterious allure this visage or this kind of idea that this is one dude or one girl that's a genius that's making everything and making a decision is obviously sometimes true in some cases but also in most cases it's not it's usually a collection of people the team who are kind of contributing to the overall magic of the entire collection and when that team and when sometimes that person gets plucked away from that team and gets put on their own you sometimes get to see who's actually really really about it and who actually maybe his time has kind of gone come and gone in it and let's see what daniel lee does kind of going forward it probably isn't the time for him to go straight into making his own brand i don't think maybe kind of plugging yourself into another brand and hopefully trying to revive that might be a good way to go about things but i'm curious to see what this um uh, matthew blessy does now going forward and i'm curious to see if the levels of the clothing are going to be just as good as some of again some of my favorite looks that i kind of saw during the resort collection and whatnot or whether it's going to be something that's going to be um a slight kind of departure away from all this sort of stuff and also when no creative directing wise whether it's not going to going to you know utilize the same looks type of models in you know in my opinion there was a little bit of a excessive pandering done towards the black community which i was a bit conflicted about it's quite they did it in a great way because obviously you know skepta fucking loves that brand right in general but it was a little bit heavy-handed i thought in some respects i always wondered what the what that what that was all about but it did work obviously because it captured the kind of cultural zeitgeist and if you are if you do kind of want to get yourself plugged in there's no better way to kind of get yourself plugged in and to get yourself cool and to get yourself cool you got to appeal to that like black twitter and shit right and those heels what are those heels those mesh heels 
heels. Remember those heels that they British Yoga did? Those mesh kind of stilettos. They came. They they became like a bad bees favorite on social media. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of was able to transcend um, cultural socio-economical uh, racial kind of levels in a very quick way especially in the three-year period like it's absolutely obscene how quickly they did it so i'm wondering if matthew blasey does the same thing as he comes in or maybe if he decides to kind of pivot and kind of you know steer the collection or steer the brand into a different direction overall i'm very very curious to see what's going on but again congrats to him obviously it's a big appointment obviously it's gonna be a lot of pressure but obviously he's you know from the looks of him from his cv he's got a lot of experience worked in the industry he's cut his teeth at all the right places you know margella what they say margella celine yeah well he's, he's worked with flipping he worked at margella maison margella, margella of course not with you know, margella but still with this in the same in the same house with the same people you know, who kind of worked with the obviously the genius himself he's worked alongside phoebe filo and has worked alongside raf simmons and obviously he studied at the um the famous belgian fashion school he'll be fine i mean he'll be completely fine he'll know what to do he's well liked well respected it looks like from the industry so i'm sure he'll be appreciated in that respect going forward so let's see man interested to see what goes on going forward i think it's at the same time that phoebe filer debuts her collection as well her debut um namesake collection i'm pretty sure maybe it's before that it's gonna be an interesting time in fashion to see what's gonna go on man the levels are gonna be upped again paris fashion week is gonna be on fire once again on fire on fire on fire um what else we're going to talk about here let's move on bu, 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 bu. Oh, let's talk about this actually let's talk about this yeah let's talk about this where is it oh my god move this around here and let's put this around there bear with me one second let's move this here too yeah Cool, there we go. So now we've got news courtesy of Mixed Mag um, regarding some new DJ tech um, gear that I'm obviously, you know, got a complete boner over. This is courtesy of Deep Mixed Mag. It says, Pioneer DJ announces a new all in one X DJ RX free DJ system. And to be honest, it's right up my alley. Definitely something that I could definitely use in my studio. It's an all in one controller that essentially mirrors the same equipment that you will find if you were to go to a club gig. Um, for myself especially um, having limited space in my house having limited space in my apartment having limited space in London overall um, it's very difficult to um, envision a time where I'm going to be able to have two CDJs and a mixer and monitors and shit that I can kind of plug into my or plug or I can kind of set up in my household so the best way to do it is obviously get some sort of all-in-one controller and then on the other side of things too when prior to the pandemic um i had the opportunity to kind of do a lot of gigs in different places and stuff in bars and pubs and whatnot and the reason why i had the opportunity to do that was because i had the uh, midi player midi controller sorry and um a decent mixer and obviously if you go to a place where they have maybe speakers or you can bring one yourself you can essentially set up shop and be have the ability to play in pubs and bars that don't have a system and maybe be able to play on a on a weekly monthly basis right that was kind of how i hacked my way into kind of getting to dj kind of on a more regular basis outside of the whole trendy hipster scene circuit where you're having to fight for scraps is that i'd go to bars and pubs and basically bring my own pa system and play for people who clearly didn't want me to be there and maybe didn't like the stuff that i was playing but it also got me to understand how to play for a different kind of crowd and to kind of get them on my side because you know that kind of crowd it's all well and good playing up to them but you also kind of kind of bring your own little flavor and obviously i did that over time and over time people started to like me more i go to get books all these places play the good stuff blah 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 but a lot of it came because they had the ability to be able to use a kind of MIDI controller, right? And they've been an absolute godsend and lifesaver. But then on the other token too, it also goes back to what I said before about when I've heard people online complaining about gendered lineups and all that sort of shit. The issue I think they main the issue that main we mostly have as DJs is that the the barrier of entry is just so low, right? It's one of the only art forms in music that you don't really need that much level of talent to kind of get involved in you know, apart from maybe playing the tambourine and playing the triangle right um there's not much talent needed to, to be a dj once you know how to beat match you're basically set and if anything the made the most kind of defining i think the most kind of separating factor when it comes to great djs is mostly the taste in music and the ability to kind of sequence a set properly right knowing what to play after what to play you know where to go how to pull a crowd in and out all that sort of shit is what's actually going to separate you all the technical aspects of it being able to beat match and using cross faders and levels and effects and channels and whatnot 
snubs those are things that you know are, are whatever but the real real deciding factor is the ability to select tracks and whatnot but it's still with this but the proliferation of gear and equipment like this it just makes it easy for anybody to pick up djing and try it for a bit so when people are complaining about lineups i think in general it's more so to do with the fact that there's too many djs out there at the moment and not enough opportunities and the reason why there's not enough opportunities because there's not a clear path to get successful and clubs don't really promote small little acts blah, blah, blah. you know the deal but anyway let's go back to the flipping gear the gear itself is fucking sick again like i said i've i've liked those so i've liked these controllers more so because it's a hack in order for you to be able to play on club ready equipment so that you can practice at home because it's all well and good to be able to book sessions at pirate studios and whatnot but you need to be able to have something at home that you can actually roll out of bed and practice two hours per day minimum to actually get you to the levels that you need to get to if you actually want to be a successful and you know professional quote-unquote dj going forward you need to have some sort of level of equipment at home and these sort of things are a great way to hack in that regard obviously if you want to then become a quote-unquote mold bar dj and go around playing in different places that don't have a setup or equipment this is also a great hack because you can just take your thing under your arm you can make be charged a bit more because you're bringing your equipment and your own speakers and shit and plug and play in the system and you're ready to rock and roll so that's also another system to go forth and just in terms of just practicing in general if you just want to fuck around or have something for a house party you've also got that going forward um so it continues here it says the new xdj rx3 dj system has finally been announced by pioneer and will be available early december this only one controller has been port built from the previous rx2 model to offer a huge range of features from its classic cdjs and dj mixes and combine a quality suitable for not only mobile performances but also home use and even small venues definitely agree with its two channel system and improved presence and speed the xdj model simplifies the browsing plus track loadings process what is most impressive is that it's 10.1 screen which is not just a pioneer dj's for the largest screen but it's also the resolution which includes including the cdj 3000 now that screen maybe i have to be the only one to say this because i've just recently been able to play on, on a set in pyro studios they've got i think in one of their sort of like rooms where they have the the deluxe rooms where they have the free decks do you have the ability to especially in london you have the ability to maybe play on a set of cdj 3000 i have to be honest the screen is a bit difficult to get used to it's too big man it's too distracting um if anything it will be nice if in the future they're able to make a cdj that maybe doesn't have such a big of a screen or maybe has a minimal size screen or maybe has an ability to maybe dim the screen in a way that doesn't make it that distracting so you're not kind of always looking at it and checking the waveforms and shit because sometimes being a little bit intuitive about your tunes and your mixing ability and what's to come next and stuff and your sequencing is just the best way to actually dj when you are aware of everything and you can see where the beat drop it can kind of maybe put you off and that screen is too distracting i found it but you know i think for a system like this you probably do need it in order to kind of actually browse your entire library because the whole premise about this is that you're not going to use your laptop you're just going to plug in your usb sticks with obviously you see the usb um, ports here at the top there and then that's where you'll be able to browse your entire playlist and library going forward so maybe it's kind of necessary i guess in that respect um it says here each juggle also has an lcd display so again it's, it's a bit much the xdj um has a variety of inputs including an auxiliary input for connecting turntables phones and other devices it also features inputs for stereo mini jack and a pair of line and phone outputs of course so you can put in flipping monitors speakers and whatnot um with the with three usb ports it can also be used for back-to-back -back performances and two mic inputs for emceeing and other types of broadcasting so it's basically all in one built i guess the only thing it's missing is like a built-in wi-fi streaming stuff but you know you don't need to do that actually you can just plug a laptop in it the system also includes performance mode for record box a cloud connected dj platform suitable for djs at all levels as free the xdj will retail at one thousand dollars or two thousand dollars and shipped early december you can order here you can watch a walk through there now the issue I think some people have is that supposedly the tech isn't up to date with all the newest latest stuff that people are talking about and i think one of the examples i've heard people mention is some denim thing called a denim prime and the issue i mainly have with this sort of stuff right is that let's imagine for a moment that this denim prime thing is a far better product um or purchase then the pioneer x dj whatever it may be yeah? it's a four channel it looks like all in one dj unit it's kind of way cheaper it's like 200 or maybe 100 quid cheaper than um what it's gonna what the x dj um was it what the x3 how do you say that name what the x sorry what the rx3 is going to retail at so you're gonna save some money there maybe you get a pair of headphones but it just looks but isn't it and again do you really want to use denon denon equipment to learn how to dj or to kind of you know 
pra- practice at home and shit you want to use the stuff you're going to use in clubs personally that's how i'd want to be it's like learning how to use turntables right after a while of using kind of shitty belt drive turntables you then kind of are going to promote yourself and maybe get yourself a pair of technics 12 tens right that's the kind of goal because more likely than not even if the club's got a shitty pair of 12 tens they're still going to have 12 tens they're not going to have your shitty new marks so you're going to need to evolve one way or sh- one way or the other and these denons and again i think dixon from innovision has a deal with denon but he doesn't even promote them that much on his social i mean he plays them in clubs and stuff but he doesn't put them on his social media feed and shit because no one wants to be associated with them but from what i've heard pioneer also aren't the most giving and willing to kind of get give people free stuff or give them money to i don't know the the also they seem tight but they have a bit of a nike thing about them because they know they're the hot shit and they're the brand that everyone wants to be associated with anyway they kind of let people come to them so for the most part people kind of you know are indifferent to kind of spot because even i don't think they even sponsor whore berlin that flipping online streaming platform there with the way they do it in a flipping toilet in berlin was really popular for the most part i think they covered the sign of the pioneer on the decks and shit they even sponsor them and that's like free advertising every single day basically for the most part they don't sponsor those guys so pioneer are probably quite tight but even if pioneer tight i'd rather just spend my money and buy a pioneer unit than ever go and buy something from denon i'm sure the quality is great but it just looks like a toy in it it just looks horrible um it and it looks proper mobile dj ish yes maybe this does too but there is something a bit more pro and a bit more club ready and a bit more serious about this i don't like maybe all the rainbow lights and shit here and there but whatever right there's still something a little bit more you know a little bit more refined about this um rx3 than it is with the denim prime 4 and i think that's the issue that they have as a brand and i don't know what you can do about stuff like that because i'm sure denim is far better brand and quality than a new mark but when i just see this i just i just see shitty new mark stuff i don't think of quality i don't think of anything that should be i don't think that this should be a buying decision that should make me moon r because again is the four channel mixing thing really that important to you maybe it is to some people to me it's not to be honest especially in these sort of units i'm not buying them to be like an all-encompassing replacement for an actual mixer that's got four channels or for an actual cdj they're sort of like the go-between or sort of like a a compromise especially for space and shit um that's what you're there for you know i don't know people that have this idea that you're going to try and get a whole cdj and a four channel mixer and streaming all this stuff all into one unit it's just crazy because how much is that really going to cost you if they were to, were to do it and also you know it's an all-in-one unit it's not going to be as great as a you know i'm sure the mixer on an all-in-one unit isn't anywhere as good as an actual standalone pioneer mixer it's the same sort of idea so I, i've never really understood this sort of approach that people have when it comes to this sort of stuff personally but again maybe i'm in the wrong when it comes to all this stuff but it's just again i was just thinking about then and how they must feel about this sort of stuff like how do you combat the reputational damage that pioneer have done to you because essentially people always think of pioneer and think industry standard they don't think of then anything industry standard maybe you think of then and you think of those kind of dj gear expos that go on and stuff right where people demo gear and do all kind of cool tricks and transitions and whatnot but you don't think of it being ready to go and play in the clubs and places maybe in other countries and stuff but mainland europe parts of the uk everyone's you know even if it's shitty pioneer 400s and 2000s and whatnot cdjs you're still going to be using that sort of equipment for the most part you're not really going to get you know like come on man like this thing looks fucking butters man it's no no chance in hell i'm ever gonna buy something like that even if it's got 16 channels i don't care but yeah rx3 dj system out in december very very soon so check that out if you're that way inclined check that out if you're that way inclined Mm-mm-mm. yeah okay let's continue that one what's we're doing here bish bash bosh bear with me one second we spoke about pioneer when we're ready duh, 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 duh. I wonder that might be something that I might end up doing actually. When I do eventually get those all in one, because I've been saying it for ages, you just save up money and then obviously buy it. But when I do eventually do get my all in one, you know, proper club ready level equipment, 
I probably do want to go and maybe set up in pubs again and bars and whatnot, local area, and start doing more gigs there. Because that was such a sweet setup, man. It was such a great hack to get in. Honestly, if you want to get gigs really quickly um, and you actually want to practice and play in front of actual real people, um, it's far more beneficial, I think, going off the beaten track than trying to compete with everyone else that's kind of, you know, fighting for scraps and all the kind of hipster, cool areas where all the kind of cool clubs and bars are. It's great if you can get in there, but for the most part, it's, it's oversaturated and there isn't enough opportunities for most people coming in if you're fresh and don't have any contacts. So the best way to do it it's again all in one system, but then you have to buy yourself a PA PA system too, which includes you know active speakers or monitors or whatnot, um, cables and whatnot, rigs, all that good stuff, and then get yourself set up in a club or in a bar, and then basically have them pay you to perform, and obviously you can then charge a bit more because you're bringing the equipment. So if it's like a hundred quid, maybe you can add two hundred quid on top, whatever it may be. But then what you do have the benefit of is that you kind of get to kind of make your own rules because you're kind of providing them with a free entertainment kind of free entertainment but you also get to play in front of a captive crowd not captive crowd you get to play in front of a crowd not captive because let's not say they're captive because these guys are just in the pub having you know having drinks and you know a sunday roast or a burger during the week a deal you know most people go to those pubs to have like you know those burger deals that they do and whatnot but if you can and get those guys to boogie have a little bit of a two-step maybe request a song or two again you, you you're gonna have to be a little bit more malleable you can't go in there and expect to play like a trance set or to play like a resonant advisor set or something right make a serious set you can have to go in there with the understanding that you might have to play for the crowd for the hour and then after that you get a chance to play what you want to play or maybe just do a bit of both in it kind of give and take maybe a bit one for you one for me or maybe two two for me one for you or three for me one for you whatever it may be um that is the best way to go about things i really did find that a real kind of benefit to me when i was coming up man i really did find it super handy so maybe it's something i can kind of revisit in the future next we got here to mix up and talk about some of trainers one of my other interests that i'm obviously obsessed with as do some of you guys know there's these absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous collaborations courtesy of Stray Rats. It features here on Kicks on Fire. So it's a Stray Rats New Balance 911, um, 991, sorry, collaboration drops next month and they look banging. Now, I'm not surprised. Um, Stray Rats always do kind of great colorways when it comes to New Balance. I think they always pick really interesting models in general, but I just love their color combinations. Um, I love the fact that most of their colorways are, are going to be, of course, inspired by some of the stuff that they kind of base their collections on. 90s stuff, um, manga, anime, all that kind of good shit. But I just love how the combinations kind of reminds me, color combination reminds me of kind of the golden era i think of sneaker collecting or sneakerhead culture when i've obviously coming up those kind of late 90s early 2000s era where shops like mitre and um atmos and just that whole kind of scene over there in japan where they were making kind of because when, when we were coming up the kind of crazy allowed colorways or something that were only reserved for some of those kind of uh, markets right asian markets so they kind of have to get shipped over so some of our kind of collaborations or some of our stuff we were getting in retail were the more of the tamer sort of stuff until crooked tongues had a collaboration or until crooked tongues got a relationship with new balance and then soulbox also but before those two guys or before those two computer platforms did new balance collaborations most of the larry ones came from those kind of places i remember how i had a pair of mitre new balance five eight freeze or something i forgot which ones they were and they were fucking larry as fuck but i absolutely loved them and i remember most of their colorways being as crazy as these right just kind of really interesting kind of a bit jarring color combinations but then when you look at them closely they kind of work for whatever reason they work like here we've got you know different shades of brown different shades of purple mixed in with whatever kind of lilac-y kind of off pinky sort of color in the middle uh you know a yellow neon yellow kind of sign here with the n lime green lining like and it all seems to work really really well on the entire thing especially with the kind of you know motif here they got on the side so for whatever reason they've, <coughs> they've seemed to work it out this collaboration is no different really so as he has started um um, slated to make his debut in December. Here's a detailed look at both colors of Stray Rats, New Balance 901. Again, I'm going to try and copy pen myself, but you know, the chance of getting them are going to be slim, but we can only try. A follow up collab to their 574 collab that dropped back in January. This type of coming in again, the 574 was again entirely slept on, I think, for definitely. I think it'll be up there for my shoe of the year this year. I might actually do that <coughs> in terms of going back and reviewing some shoes that dropped, and I might just do like an unconventional shoe of the year 
or do a top five because you know everyone's gonna pick the same old bait ones like the Pato and Max was. That just came out and shit. But I'm gonna maybe do another one. So I'm doing some mad noise in my mouth at the moment. Let's go. Um, dressed in signature color scheme. Um, the first nine in one dressed in a purple suede. Da, da, da. The Stray Rats New Balance nine one collab does not have an official release date, but current reports have both both pairs dropping in December on StrayRats.com thoughts. So yeah, you got the first colorway there. Um, with the purples and the browns, obviously more of a signature, I'd say, um, Stray Rats colorway in terms of what they've done prior. And then you've got this fucking aggressive bad boy, right? This Sonic the Hedgehog demon. This black and purple monster it just looks fucking bad, bad ass, as they say, as Americans say, bad ass. It looks fucking great in it. And again, they got the mo, they got the little um, stray rats. I, I like the logo that they got here, stray rats. Instead of the okay, hmm, I like that. They don't have any so so. I wonder what that what that um the 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 the, the double sl the double slashes there. And I like that. I, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that, I like that motif. Um yeah. All all in all, great colorway. Um I'd probably say, even though the blacks are my favorite, I might actually go for the purples. The sorry the brown and purples. They might be the standout apart from the black. Even though the blacks are great, I'd still kind of you know happily take them. Of course, UK ten. Hold out your boy. But the purples are maybe my favorite, I think. The purples and brown, they look fucking great, man. Again, they just so much remind me of those kind of, you know, Japan exclusive um, New Balances from back in the day that Mita, Atmos, and all those kind of places would make and shit. Like, oh, so, so good. You see them in like a sneaker magazine somewhere and you're wondering what collaboration it was because it was written in Japanese. You had no idea who did it and whatnot. It's just, oh, so, so good. Look at them so so banging maybe if the black pair the only thing i'd change if i could was up to me maybe change the midsole color to maybe le make it less clumsy. maybe it'll look different in real life it just looks a little bit too black maybe break it up a little bit by changing the midsole maybe making it maybe the same color as whatever kind of middle bit this is this gray sort of colorway similar to what they did here with those right they sort of or maybe this gray is nice isn't it this is sort of harkening back to what the actual grs of the 911 or the 991 so it looked like right they kind of got this sort of grayish sort of colorway so maybe just doing that on the black sword that maybe help to break it up a little bit but maybe they didn't want it to be too black gray black gray black gray i don't know but still two both colorways look fucking banging um sometime in december stray rats new balance 991 you know you're probably not going to get the pair but anyway try anyway because you know you've only got this you've only got one shot of life why not give it a go why not give it a bloody go um, what else we have to talk about here? We got this, we got that. Um, Miss Bosh Bosh, what's we got to talk about here? I think, was that it? I think that might be it, you know? Yeah, I think that might be all my main ones we're going to talk about. I think the rest of them I'll leave for later. Because I've got a live show coming up as well if you are interested to check out. Um, but, 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 what else we got here? Do we got plenty? Got this? Got this? Yeah, I'll leave the rest of it for tomorrow. Leave it for tomorrow. But yeah, that's been the episode of show episode number three one eight. And I said right, three one eight. I'm pretty sure I said three one eight. Um, thanks again for tuning in as per usual. It's been a pleasure to have you here with me, enjoying, chilling, and maxing. And I have a live show coming up very soon. So if you're on the YouTube, you'll be able to see it when it pops up. If you're listening to the podcast, I probably missed it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for the kid. I'm going to be in your scene, in your sector very soon. Oh, I'm actually DJing in Bur Birmingham next week. Next weekend, then on the 27th, link will be in the description if you want to check that out and you're in the area, want to buy a ticket, support the boy. I'll put the, sh the link in the show notes, of course, so you can select and go from there. Apart from that, what else am I doing? Not much, really. Might have a little trip booked in for Berlin again in December because I'll be invited um, to go and DJ at this live streaming platform. So maybe that could be an option. Maybe sometime in January, hopefully go back again to the New Year's Eve. I really want to go to the Sylvester kind of New Year's Eve thing that they do, right? Um, but I'm waiting for the lineups to be released and stuff before I obviously go. And also I'm going to make sure I get the date sorted out and also I make sure that I can go and all that sort of stuff. You know, there's a lot of complications that need to get wrangled in order to make that work. But fingers crossed that can work. Fingers crossed that can work. We're looking forward to it. Fingers crossed. But apart from that, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. I'll see you guys again very soon peace out be safe and all that malarkey take care look after all your families and friends and stop minding 
business of celebs.